What's going on everybody C4? Welcome back to the channel and today we are continuing off of our last retro mod episode where our 1994 Dolphins who went 16-1 and in the regular season were the best team in the NFL where we are the offensive coordinator under the great Don Shula. We went on and won the Super Bowl and I said as starting this series as an OC when we won a Super Bowl that is when we'd make the jump to become a head coach and looking at the available teams that we could jump to None made more sense than one of the two expansion teams in this current offseason where we're at. The Carolina Panthers and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Both were expansion teams during this process. Given the fact that we've already done a Panthers franchise on the channel, it just made so much sense to take over the Jacksonville Jaguars from year one of their existence. This roster is absolute butt cheeks. I've spent the better part of two hours combing the modded file to see what players existed in this game that were a part of this year one Jacksonville Jaguars expansion franchise and I put that team here together it's included the actual picks from the expansion draft as well as players they just were able to land in free agency we only have one dev trait player on the entire roster and that is Ben Coleman a star dev guard only 24 so there's definitely some upside there and in real life he had a nice career with the Jacksonville Jaguars we have uh, Waddell there 75 center Novak coming over from our Dolphins team so him and Pat Finis making the jump from the Super Bowl champion Dolphins but, I mean, beyond that, not particularly good. Uh, we got Jimmy Smith. And if you know anything about Jags history, Jimmy Smith was a multiple thousand-yard receiver eventually with the Jags. But when he got there his first season, he was kind of a red flag type player. Had his off-the-field issues, which were incredibly valid. You have Mark Brunel, who at this point didn't do anything in the NFL, but eventually went on. And face scan looks a little rough there. Looks a lot better when the helmet's on him. Uh, Mark Brunel went on had a nice career with the Jags. He was like their first kind of good quarterback. Brought them to the playoffs. We have Desmond Howard here at wide receiver. Former Heisman Trophy winner, but never really put it all together as a wide receiver in the NFL. More of a return specialist. But I'm not going to lie, that's a guy that we're definitely going to be able to do some damage with. But still not a prolific wide receiver whatsoever. And the defense gets, honestly, even worse. Really no one notable was on that Jags defense. Like our best player in terms of like production was a safety who had three interceptions named Harry Colon. And I feel like that is a perfect name to represent this defense. It is a Harry Colon of a defense. So because the powers of B don't allow any way to have like an expansion draft feature in Madden. Don't know why. That'd be pretty cool. And we have the actual expansion draft players that were available already on this roster. Steve Berline here, formerly of the Arizona Cardinals, was the first round pick in the expansion draft from the Jags. And he's a terrible 63 overall. Jared Goff looking ass. Not good enough. And while I want this to be a challenge, obviously it's going to be a challenge. Ahead of the draft, I do want to have some aspect of an expansion draft where we have a little bit of fun. Here is what I have decided to do. We are going to comb the league and poach five players. These five players have to meet two different thresholds. One, they have to be a backup player. And two, they have to be below a 75 overall. So we're going to start with our first pick, bringing an electrifying Jaguar legend to put the pairing together a little ahead of schedule versus when it happened in real life. Our first pick of the expansion draft is Keenan McCardell. Player who in real life in six seasons in Jacksonville had over 6,300 yards receiving and 30 touchdowns. Second pick going to our former team, the Super Bowl champion Miami Dolphins. We're going to select Larry Webster in the second round. Our third pick is going to be the right outside linebacker from the Denver Broncos, Alan Aldridge. Our first pick is going to be a depth free safety from the Rams, Marquez Pope. 72 overall. And for our final pick, I'm going to go with a little bit of a wild card here. And that is going to be at the running back spot. We're not so much thinking about going best player available. With our fifth selection, I am going to get the rights for Bo Jackson. Bo Jackson, at this 1995 point, has finished his final season in the MLB. And now he's not sure what he wants to do. Maybe he's starting to feel a little bit healthy. I don't know. He won't be available right away. But kind of treat this as we own the rights to Bo Jackson. And hopefully at some point in this expansion year, he's going to come play for us. Now the expansion draft has completed. It is time for the NFL draft. This is the most recent mock draft. So that's pretty much going to be in line with where the board falls. And I think we may have to move just a little bit. Given the fact that we suck, given the fact that we're an expansion team, we probably should have one of the first two picks along with 
the Carolina Panthers. We do not. And given the makeup of our roster, right now we're projected Joey Galloway, Steve McNair, Wayne Sherbet. I mean, I'm, I kind of want to rock and roll with that old school Jags lineup. See if we can make it happen with Mark Brunel, Keenan McCardell, and Jimmy Smith. Maybe that's dumb because Joey Galloway is probably going to be a higher rating than all of those guys. Steve McNair is definitely going to be a higher rating than Mark Brunel. You go a little bit beyond that. We do have Derek Brooks, the great Derek Brooks, but like that's, you know, we always kind of want to do this in the spirit of the draft, where if I have a top five pick, would Derek Brooks go fifth? You know, kind of maybe, who knows? Potentially outside of that, you know, you got Terrell Davis, who's a legend from this draft class. You have Curtis Martin, who's a legend from this draft class. I mean, in line with what the Jags actually did, they got James Stewart, the running back here to Tennessee, and obviously the great Tony Baselli was their first pick. Why did become a Hall of Famer for them? But I'm going to be honest, the two players that I was kind of eyeing, I don't even throw three. I'll throw Baselli in here. It was Ty Law, Baselli, and Warren Sapp. And all three of those guys are supposed to go before our fifth pick. So I'm going to say right now, I'm going to entertain with these. What's going to cost to move up to pick two, three, or four? Let's find out. Let's start the draft. So after getting pretty much yelled at by picks two and three, we're going to see if we can move up one spot with the Philadelphia Eagles. This is a landing spot for Warren Sapp. He's kind of been the player all along that I think I would prefer, because right now I just don't have anybody I can use her on the defense. So to move up one spot, I'm going to offer our third round pick this year and our third round pick next year. It's obviously not an expensive price to pay. I think the Philadelphia Eagles, who are in desperate need of a quarterback, are going to take this anyways, knowing that pretty much it's still going to let Steve McNair fall into their lap. And it's just, it's just a way to secure that we get who we want and Philly can get who they want. Here we go. Start the draft. We got to wait a couple picks. Hopefully nothing crazy happens. If not, I mean, we can pivot if we need to. Baltimore with the first overall pick. Select Kijana Carter, running back from Penn State. Second overall, the Houston Texans go Ty Law. Third overall, the other expansion team, the Carolina Panthers, start their first season of all time with Tony Baselli, which is what the Jaguars did in real life. Now, with the cost of a couple third round picks at pick four, we can kind of control our board a little bit. And, you know, Ty Law, I think honestly, if I can move on to pick two, given our team, I might have been open minded to getting Ty Law. But all things considered, keeping the Florida guy here out of Miami, the great Warren Sapp. We got three Bs across the board 6 2, 303, ridiculous athlete, elite speed, elite strength. Elite change of direction, a franchise cornerstone. Welcome to Jacksonville, Warren Sapp. Going into the second round. Oh boy. Well, I like many of you probably aren't going to be familiar with a lot of the names, so we we got to just trust our board here a little bit. We got Cordell Stewart, first round talent at quarterback. That's still kind of interesting. You know, obviously we have the commitment here to Mark uh, Mark Brunel, but he's a pretty good athlete, Cordell Stewart believe who'd he get drafted by the Steelers back in the day um not much I'm seeing here at running back I'm gonna be honest the only other player that I have heard of at this point is Reuben Brown of the Pittsburgh Panthers I believe he ended up making like nine Pro Bowls in his career most notably with the Buffalo Bills so I'm just gonna go with literally the only guy I've heard of that's available out of position need and he rolls with a dev trade Reuben Brown welcome the Jacksonville. We couldn't get Tony Bissell and get the next best thing. Cheating here a little bit. I've now brought up the stats of the players from the 1995. I need a tight end. We got Pete Mitchell here. Went on to have 2,000 total yards in his career. So, sure. Next up, we're going to look at Lance Brown here. Need a little depth to our secondary. Never heard of him, but I'm going to go with the guy with the profile. Six foot two, 200 pounds, ran a 4.36. Looks like a damn good athlete. Welcome to the secondary. Now we're at a little bit of depth here at linebacker going John Solomon. The reason why I'm showing these late round picks that I've never heard of and likely you've never heard of is probably there's one guy out there that might have like an uncle or like a, a stepdad. That's one of these guys that I'm talking about and I do it for those moments. We don't have a kicker or punter on the roster and I've heard of Todd Sauerbrunn. So we're going to go ahead, draft him with his A kick accuracy. Ooh, 94 kick power and a hidden dev. Special teams matters. Travis Hall was a D tackle that went in the seventh round. Ended up finishing his career with 42 sacks. So sure, sure. Don't even need him. But well, we'll take him. Hidden death. Let's go. Studying, Googling, having a cheat sheet. Has some benefits here. I'm just going for depth. Now we're going to go Brian Thur at left tackle. Back up. Need a kicker. I've heard of Joe Nedney. 
But Steve McLaughlin actually was a kicker that was picked in the third round of this draft by the Rams. So, like, I'm intrigued more so, like, what's that rating going to look like? See accuracy, but he has elite kick power. Ah, why not? Oh, ho, ho, stud. So here's a look at our draft recap. And when all is said and done, pretty solid. Couple butt cheap picks. Holler, what did have a hidden dev, but he's only at 58. McLaughlin, 70. Cybron, 75. Hidden dev. Uh, 68 for Solomon, 67 Lance Brown, 68 for Pete Mitchell. Guys I've never heard of, but I have heard of Ruben Brown, 73 with a hidden dev. I will definitely take that on the offense. That's going to be a day one starter as we flex retro Jags uniform with the big pick. The big get is Warren freaking Sap. Middle of defense. This is going to be guy. Get ready. A lot of usering of Warren Sap. We're going to try to break the sack record with Warren Sap. We're going to try to get in line with what Warren Sap did and eventually accomplished in his Hall of Fame career. And that is how we start this Jags expansion season. Get a long off season. So we're just going to hop in on the sticks here week one to wrap up today's video. And we'll be back before too long to at least get to the midway point where we're going to be stopping probably around the trade deadline just before that. So you guys can kind of voice your opinion on whether or not we need to be making some trades. I don't think so. I think right now we need to be keeping our assets and just building and developing what we have here in the team. Uh, as it stands right now, Bo Jackson, not with team. We are we are hoping that at some point he will be able to join us, but we'll, we'll, we'll wait just a little bit as he's deciding whether or not he wants to make a return to the NFL after wrapping up his MLB career. But Mark Brunel, Jimmy Smith, Keenan McCardell, Desmond Howard, we got some nice pieces there. We got Reuben Brown on the offensive line, 73 with a dev trait. So the interior is fairly solid. Might have some success running on the inside, for sure running towards the right side of this offensive line. Defensively, kind of excited to get on the six with Warren Sapp, but we're going to be completely honest. The rest of the defense, kind of the shits. So it's going to hopefully be a lot of Warren Sapp. And, uh, you know, maybe he's going to elevate everyone else around him. Now, while we're just loading this up, Houston is still doesn't exist. So it's as cupcake of a team. This is our biggest opportunity at a win this season. Let's see what happens in a divisional matchup. Third and five. We got McCardell, Howard Smith. Howard is, he got the 96, 97 speed acceleration. He might be the guy, our big play playmaker. We got Jimmy Smith wins on the outside. Left-handed Mark Brunel floats it up there. Jimmy Smith comes down with it. We go Vaughn Dunbar, great burst behind the line. That right-hand side road grades his way into the end zone. First touchdown in the history of Jacksonville right there. Vaughn Dunbar, who? Opportunity here with the defense. First chance with Warren Sapp on the sticks. I'm expecting a man that's going to elevate this defense. Oh, wow. He got cooked. All right. Chance to come in here in the red zone late in the first. Oh, my God. A one-handed interception by something known as a Kowalski. Defense does their job, gets off the field. Got a field goal attempt there, which we nail. 10-7, the good guys. Need our defense to get a nice stand here before the end of the first half. Holy shit. All right, this team of amateurs is pretty good. All right, we're going to go four verts. Uh, Mark Bedell, not the best start. We've got two interceptions right now, no touchdowns. Again, you got to remember, there's even with Dan Marino and the Dolphins, a little bit of a learning curve with the Pat Phoenix air raid offense. Also doesn't help that, you know, our team kind of sucks. That needs to be a catch. Second half starts. Defense does get off the field, but we're kind of just trading punts for the entirety of the third. We do get a go-ahead score. Didn't have an opportunity to hop in and play, but we do have a chance to get off the field here. Now, Houston is in field goal range, potentially tied up at third 10. Can't give up the first down. Warren Sapp gets thrown to the ground, but a great pursuit there. By the linebacker, and we're going to hold Houston to a field goal attempt. Which they nail it. Offense, got an opportunity. Third down. Like, I absolutely hate this play. We're relying on our tight end room, which is not the best. I got to take off. Rock Brudel does it himself. Sneaky athletic. Got another third down just outside field goal range. Got a good kicker, though. 99 kick power, so we should feel somewhat confident we can make some plays. Oh, my God. We have that on the outside. Got to connect. Keenan McCardell 
First pick of the expansion draft. What a grab. Second goal on the sixth, Von Dunbar. Holding on to Maurice Jones-Drew's number. Still a couple years away. Look at that. Fights through the contact. Falls forward for his second touchdown of the game. Jags regain the lead. Need a good defensive stand here, though. Don't want to blow it. What is this defense? Good run here. Puts us in field goal range. We have all of our timeouts. We've been more efficient running the football. Look at that. Bounces to the outside. Good yards. Burn timeout. 48 yards. Rookie Steve McLaughlin. Great. Pressure is on. I feel pretty good about this. Fuck! Opening drive. Good drive here. Third down. We'll pop it. Third and eight. We are in scoring range. We'd love to see like just a Desmond Howard just rip one off here. Get wide open. Doesn't really happen. But Mark Brudel, I mean, Mark, he got 80 speed. Look at this. They sell over the pass. Mark Brudel does it himself. Get your blocks. Get your blocks. Let's go. Walk off score. Too easy. Vaughn Dunbar. Third, fourth touchdown of the game. What a debut for the 70 overall running back. Oh, we see the one right now is the pressure on Bo Jackson to join the lineup because he's going to be forgotten. Dunbar plays like that. Now, I will say I'm a little intrigued that if we can get this kind of push with not a great running back, what would Bo Jackson be able to do? But Dunbar was great. Pete Mitchell, leading receiver. He's our rookie tight end. 87 yards for Keenan McCardell. We have on the defensive side, Harry Colin, seven tackles in the team, two sacks for Alan Aldridge, who was one of our expansion draft picks. Dave Thomas with an interception. But all things considered, great, you know, wasn't pretty, but we got the job done. Off of that first game, Warren Sapp gets a upgrade. Glad that he is hitting the ground and running here. We're going to need him to honestly just hopefully be an X Factor. That'd be awesome. Hopefully we don't get too many more wins because I want a high draft pick. Looking at this draft class, a 1996 draft class. We got a Vinatieri there, a kicker. Uh, wasn't a good year for quarterbacks like John Kitna is probably the, you know, Bobby Hoying played for the Eagles, but Kitna is probably the most successful quarterback from the class. Not great. You got Eddie George at running back, legend Mike Allstott at fullback. Ooh, might need to, might need to get some Mike. A great year for wide receivers. Keyshawn Johnson, Marvin Harrison, T.O., Eric Moulds, Monty Tumor, Moosin, Muhammad, Terry Glenn, all viable options. Legendary John Ogden on the offensive line. He could be great. Uh, Willie Anderson there. In terms of pass rushers, we've got Simeon Rice, Tony Brackens, Leroy Glover. Um, much at linebacker. Until you get to the middle linebacker, we have Ray Lewis and Zach Thomas. Both those guys, absolute legends. Teddy Bruschi's there. Going to the secondary, I remember Walt Harris. we got Weapon X. Hey, right now, we're going to just go ahead and add that guy to our favorites right now. It's going to be pretty hard-pressed for me not to get it. Lori Malloy had a successful career. So it's a nice draft class, but we're definitely going to want a higher pick than not. I guess if we don't have a higher pick, maybe that will put us in the range. Just say screw it and get Brian Dawkins. But it is what it is. So between now and the next episode, I'm going to do my homework to try and get Bo Jackson to join up with his expansion team and uh, maybe sell a couple jerseys here, do a little good PR for the squad. But we did get our first victory of the season over the Texans, which is as good a start as any. So I hope you guys did enjoy this episode. We'll be back before too long. Let me know who you guys are. Some of those players, maybe you want to see me draft. If we don't go Brian Dawkins, especially the top end, I'm not going to I mean, Brian Dawkins, I want Brian Dawkins and Mike Allstott. I might be trading future picks. I'd make Mike Allstott my RB1. I'll tell you that right now. Like It's a lot of opportunities, a lot of different scenarios that I think would be very, very fun for this franchise. But we got, I, I think we got a bunch of years here. For us to build a contender, we're starting pretty bad. We almost literally lost to a team full of, like, the worst players you could have and worst starters at the position in the Houston Texans. So that's only a preview of the difficulties to come. But that'll do it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button, smash the like button if you enjoyed. And until next time, it's your boy C4 saying, come on, Bo. Come on, join us for the next episode.